So what I figured out in life as I get older and older, right, is that we constantly have to redirect ourselves in thought, in theory, in duty, responsibility. Redirect ourselves because we get easily distracted. A distraction can come in many, many different forms. It could be through a person, a place, or a thing. A distraction can lead you to an identity crisis. And what I mean by that is, is that when you entertain the wrong thoughts, when you entertain a distraction sent by the devil, it's always going to lead to one of three things, to steal, kill, or destroy in your life. So the devil works with seeds, just like God works with seeds. And his seeds, the devil seeds, the Bible refers to it as darts. These darts, he throws them at your mind. And I find that not just as a Christian, but just as a human being in general, we have to constantly be directing our life just like a sailboat. We have to be moving the, whatever, what do they call that? That the wind catches and you're going in the direction that you want it, the sail. We, we have to be, you know, moving it to the direction that we want to go to. You cannot, and I repeat, you cannot leave yourself on autopilot and just believe that life is going to take you in the direction that you want to go it's always going to lead you towards destruction because the flow of this world the current the natural current of this world is negative so this world is natural current is negative that means that the winds are going to always be blowing towards an area that you're going to find yourself in desolation you're going to find yourself in this place of dryness of chaff right it's death, okay? A lot of people, listen to me, a lot of people deal with mental illness and they deal with all kinds of oppression, depression, all this stuff, okay? All these are symptoms of the current of this world that is taking people into this desolation, this death. So you have to redirect yourself on purpose. It's not gonna happen because, uh, you know, there's grace. God sometimes throws you a nugget. He gives you an idea. He gives you an inspiration. Sometimes there's a, a wind that takes you into the right direction. That's God's grace and mercy for your life, right? But if somebody comes into your life and they actually mean you well. They actually want to help you out. They, you know, and these are the, you know, the sails that we do want to take. We want to go into that direction. We want to take that route. We want to go from glory to glory, faith to faith, as the Bible says. But I just find that we constantly in this life have to be on top of what it is that we're thinking about. What it is that our identity is adopting, right? In my life, personally, I deal with a lot of spiritual warfare. A lot of people do deal with a lot of spiritual warfare. They just don't know it. A lot of people are blind to the fact that they're being attacked. But when you're sensitive, I'm sensitive in the spirit. I can sense when there's an evil spirit a mile away. I can sense it. Um... Because people call it negative energy. But this is an evil spirit. They just label it different. But it's we're talking about the same thing. These negative evil spirits, uh, they, they are on assignment, right? They have personalities. They have uh, an assignment on everybody's life. And so from this place comes all this mental illness, right? Because when they inhabit your life... When they come and cling to you, they suck the life out of you. They suck the good stuff out of you. And they try to make you feel like you are them and they are you. That's why so many people are saying, I, you know, their, their so-called pronouns these days are they, them. It's because they're dealing with these forces that come in groups. Um, Mary, the, the prostitute in the, in the Bible, she was possessed by seven demons. Okay. Jesus casted out seven out of her, okay? So they and them, right? There was the, the, the guy that was uh, that had legion. He had hundreds, if not thousands of spirits inside of him. I don't know how much a legion is, but I think it was 7,000. I think I heard that. Now, the point that I'm trying to make is, is that we are constantly... In a, we're in a very spiritual uh, world in this in, in this earth, right? And even though you can't see them, you can see their destruction all around you. You can see what they're doing all around you. Just, you know, look around. You see their agenda. You see that they're here to steal, kill, and destroy. 
And mainly what they're here to do is to thwart the plan of God. That's mainly their their compass. You know, the, de the devil and the demons, what do they want? They want to convert everything that is of God. They want to turn it inside out. So you see a lot of antichrist agenda in these end days because we're living in the end days and we're approaching the end of the end where there's going to be mayhem, chaos, and destruction, you know, uh, in, in ways that you can never fathom, you know. When you say defund the police, you're talking about no protection, okay, no defense, no nobody you can count on to help you, right? And you're talking about taking away guns and this and that. And now you're, you're just going into an area where you're really defenseless and anything goes, right? Because we're entering into a place where anything goes, right? They, they wanted to pass laws like the purge, etc. And, you know, it's really ruthless. And it's all antichrist because God is all about order and structure and discipline and self-control. He's all about helping your neighbor, loving your neighbor as you love yourself and... Even loving your enemy for that case, you know, because there has to be forgiveness and there has to be mercy and grace and love, right? And so God has given us all these principles in the Bible to live by, but if people ignore it, forsake it, and walk away from it, we have what you see in this earth. We have what you see all around you, right? So for that reason, we are the light of the world. We are, you know, the salt of this earth. We, we go and we do the, the things that Jesus would do on earth right you feed the poor you take care of the people that can't help themselves etc right you're not selfish with your life so back to the beginning of the video i just noticed you know that you constantly have to redirect the way that you're thinking and the way you're functioning in life you have to continue to tell yourself who you are that's very important so the more you tell yourself who you are, the more you're going to become that. But if you let people, radio, TV, uh, just advertisement and all this stuff tell you who you are, you're going to be all over the place. You're going to be stretched. You're going to be like a pretzel. You're going to be, oh, this person said this, that person said that. And, and then labels and titles and this and that will make you cringe because you won't know who you are. And at the same time, the world wants to define you. And then that's when you see all these videos of people crying because they, they, you know, they're trying to figure out who they are, their identity. They're in an identity crisis. And we have an identity crisis in this world. And I, once upon a time, was in an identity crisis of myself and my own. I was in a place where I, I didn't know who I was. I dealt with different spirits, demons, okay? Um... These, these spirits, they come with personalities and they come with genders. And so there's a spirit of Jezebel as an example. The spirit of Jezebel is a controlling spirit, a witchcraft spirit, a spirit of lust, a prostitution, one that's sexual in nature. So she's all into adultery and fornication, okay? But she's also a witch and she's also a manipulator and a control freak. This is the spirit of Jezebel. Look how many things she brings to the table. And so when she possesses somebody, that person is dealing with all those characters traits okay they want to control the person that they're with they're manipulating they're lying they're deceiving but they're also a cheater um you know they're so they're fornicating all around and so we know a lot of these types of people in this world but that is the spirit of jezebel most likely if that person went to church and they got casted that that demon out you will find that that person no longer wants to do those things so again the person is being inhabited by a spirit that the spirit is driving that person to do all these things and if you cast out the demon the person will be in the right mind and they won't want to do those things anymore when i got the spirit of nicotine casted out of me i didn't want to smoke no more and it was funny because i didn't even know that this, there was such a thing as a spirit of nicotine but i later found out that they there's witches and warlocks and stuff like that that they they do chants and they do all kinds of ceremonies over the tobacco when they're selling it because they want to become they want people to become addicted and they want their, their stuff to sell and so then spirits come and yeah it just, when you inhale you're inhaling that thing and so then that thing his it, its job is smoke more you know have that jonesy feeling that feeling there's a spirit of gluttony right where you eat food as a habit as a recreational hobby not not because you're hungry but just and that's a spirit that is just pushing for that thing 
uh, for that for that habit to just and then that person just feels like it's an emotional roller coaster for them. Yeah, they, they're doing it from an emotional standpoint. So we have different demons and spirits, and I can go on and on. But the the point that I'm trying to make is is that the more you're aware of what you're your what's in this world, the more you're aware of what the Bible says. Right? The Bible has given you the insight on how to protect yourself defend yourself how to be an overcomer over all these things but if you don't know any of it and you're just oblivious and you're going about life then you're going to be like a pretzel and you're going to be pulled by these demons and spirits and all this manipulation all these lies and deception and labels and titles and all this stuff that's mental illness you're going to be pulled in so many different directions and ultimately their their agenda is to steal kill and destroy they want to steal your agenda and steal your identity, kill your 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 destiny, and destroy your future. That's what they're here for. Okay. So when you find out that Jesus is the savior of the world, that Jesus came to give you identity and to father you and to, to tell you who you are and how valuable you are and how special you are and how how much he loves you and all of this that's a glimpse into a whole new future into a whole new life into that's a portal that you enter into that leads you like away from darkness into light right when we walk in through the portal of jesus christ the portal i i i, I want to use that word portal because when you get born again essentially you're walking in through a portal that you were dead all your life and now you walked in through a port and you come out the other end and you find out that you've been lied to your whole life and that you are a new creation now. And it's like, it's a good illustration, it's a good definition of, of being transferred, of being transformed, right? And so everybody should walk in through that portal of Jesus Christ. You should call, everybody should call upon the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ to save their soul, walk in through that portal that he makes available for us all. So that we can go and transfer from where we are at with all of our baggage and drama and problems and all of our clutter, okay, all of our mess and walking through that uh, portal that he makes available to us through faith and your faith and your belief system in Jesus Christ is like you knocking on his door and he opens up that door. You walk through that door of heaven that he makes available to you through faith and when you walk in through that portal. You walked into to a whole new existence, a whole new identity, a whole new way of living, a whole new life. And everybody needs that. Everybody needs that on planet Earth. And if everybody tasted and saw how good God is, they wouldn't question his goodness. It's just that Satan works overtime to try to make God out to be the person that is doing all these problems that you see all over the place. It's the devil. Why doesn't the devil ever get blamed for anything? It's always God. The devil is the one that steals, kills, and destroys. God said that I came to give you life and life more abundant. So we need to get up out of our feelings and our uh, selfishness and our pride and our ego. We need to humble ourselves, come to God and say, God, forgive me for all my sins. Make me right with you. Uh, wash me clean. Cleanse me. Heal me of all my wounds and everything, all this stuff. Remove all this baggage, all this clutter, Lord. I submit to you. And and, and that's like, that. it's a beautiful beginning a beautiful introduction to a brand new future for your life when people say that and they really mean it with all of their hearts they see a, a difference they see god show up and it's an initiation it doesn't end there it's not like oh i made it okay finish line okay my life is not perfect it's, it's not like that okay guys but what it does is that it introduces a brand new life to your life okay brand brand new choices decisions brand new outlook mindset brand new everything I remember back in the day, I used to have the, the worst energy. That anybody that would get next to me thought that I was going to mug them or kill them or hurt them. That, And I hated that energy that I had, but I remember me feeling sorry for the people that would be around me if I was dealing with like an old person or this or that, like a customer at work. I remember when I was demon possessed back in the day i didn't know the logistics of what i'm explaining now to you i didn't understand it to the fullest i didn't understand maybe just a little bit i understood that there was many things wrong with me but that's about all i understood but when i remember man i used to carry this aura people call it the aura you know i used to carry this energy with me man and uh, the energy was demonic right but it was this like violent type of energy where it was just like man 
your your hair on your your neck or your arms would raise up from being next to me in other words you felt unsafe around me and and it was this energy that you you just knew uh this guy's no good right and it was spiritual behind the scenes so when i got delivered from those demons as i accepted jesus christ and he came into my life did it happen overnight no it was a process the process it took years if i if, if i could be honest with you it took years because i had to go through many deliverance uh retreats to get demons all, all, all the way out of my life i want to paint paint an authentic picture for people so that they understand that it's not overnight it's a process man we didn't get there overnight and we're not going to get out overnight the devil doesn't just give up easily okay when the devil's in your life and he feels like he owns you and you belong to him and you tell him, pack your bags, go. I'm, I belong to Jesus now. He doesn't just say, oh, man, I'm leaving. Like, he tries to rebel. He tries to ensnare you, manipulate you, lie to you. Now, he knows that you have authority, but he tries to manipulate you in the sense that he's like, well, they don't really know the authority that they carry. So that he tries to lie to you and try to make you feel like he, you don't have authority. So he tries to stall you, delay you. And um, like, when you tell him to go, he tries to say, like, well, you know, and then you you like like in other words if you don't have patience you'll, you'll give up and you'll think oh man he's not leaving you know but the fact here is is that it's the devil we're dealing with he's rebellious by nature and so the fact here is that sometimes they don't leave right away and you have to stick with it you have to command them command them because what they pay attention to is authority do you know who you are in jesus christ and uh but when Jesus Christ backs you up, you know, there's anointing there. And then they, they, they can't stay when the anointing comes. So what am I saying in all of that I'm saying? I'm saying that we live in a very spiritual world and there's, it's negative in nature. And that you have to check yourself and you have to take inventory of what you're believing about yourself and your identity. And that you have to completely be on purpose about where you're heading in life. And you have to affirm yourself in, in that direction. So you tell yourself who you are. Something that I did in the very beginning of my salvation is that I kept telling myself who I was in Jesus Christ. It was foreign to me. I wasn't used to being saved. I wasn't used to living in the light. I wasn't used to being good. I was used to everything that was bad. So for me, I had to, I had to renew my mind. And the way that I did that was I bought myself a poster. And the poster read, I am, on the very top. And then it, it, and it claimed a bunch of verses in the Bible. I am a royal priest of the holy nation of purchased people. I am a yeah, son of the most high God. I am purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am loved. I am forgiven. I, you know, it, 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 all these different promises of God, you know, um, I am seated in heavenly places. So th this to me was like water to my soul because like I was just like, I'm saying it, but it sounds so weird. And like this is stuff like that I don't believe about myself but the more I said it every day every day every day the more it, it developed in my life and so many people the devil has them trained to say I'm stupid I'm this I'm that and it's derogatory towards themselves so they wonder why they're living all the way down here right but they're dreaming of living all the way up here and you have to change the way you speak change the way you think change the way you and, and just by changing the way you speak, that's going to change a lot of stuff, okay? Because there's life and death in the power of the tongue, and so you create stuff with your mouth, okay? The worst type of witchcraft is the one that comes out of your mouth. When you curse people with your mouth, you're cursing them in real life. And when you bless people with your mouth, you're blessing them in real life. That's why people smile and cry at the power of the tongue, okay? Or they'll become very calloused in their heart, and they just, you know... That's when they've been hurt so much that they just, you know, they severed that that connection in their heart. So, there's, these are all spiritual pr principles in the Bible that God uh, teaches us, right? Let's learn. Let's learn God's way and be triumphant over this world. Because if you do things God's way, right, you're not in charge, right? If you do things God's way, He's in charge, then you will go into the winning team right you do things according to the devil's way the devil's greatest deception is to tell you that you're in the winning team the the devil's greatest deception is to tell you that he's stronger than god 
the greatest greatest decept the devil's greatest deception is to tell you uh, that there's nothing like like to tell you that to keep on going into that that darkness that there's more to have there's more to taste there's more fun to have and this and that it's all big fat lies in the end of the day he's the father of lies he doesn't know how to tell the truth the bible says so you are not meant to conversate with the devil you're not meant to talk to him make friends with him or any of that why because he's a great deceiver and he will deceive you like no one's business let me tell you okay he's good at his job that's why he got one third of the angels out of heaven so don't play that game but rather have jesus christ defend you have jesus christ be the defender of your life and just bring jesus christ in on every situation of your life Right? If the devil's harassing you, bring Jesus Christ into the, the, the picture. Right? When Archangel Michael was addressing the devil, he said, The Lord rebuke you. He brought Jesus Christ into the, the picture. Archangel Michael didn't say, I rebuke you. Right? The devil can care less about your rebuke. He cares about the Lord's rebuke. Remember, this is God, man. We're talking about God. And so, he's the one... He's the author and finisher of your faith. He's the one that with the, the power, the dominion, the authority. And we need to cling on to him and bring him in on our daily adventures and ventures and all this stuff that we go through in life. We need to bring him in so that we can have the light in, all, in, in our situation, in our life. So that darkness doesn't try to have its way with us. Hopefully this video... You know, bless you and helped you to make sense out of some stuff that you're going on in your life. You know, when I'm talking on these videos, I don't know who really I'm talking to. I just go and I flow with the Holy Spirit. So, hopefully, this video blesses you. God bless you guys. Bye bye.